Welcome to part two of this video series of an introduction to tangos compas. In the last video, we worked on basic compas for tangos, and today we're gonna build upon that by adding some chord variations and typical chord cycles that you find in tangos. So if you haven't watched the first video, check it out first, otherwise stick around. Hey guys, David Cherboga here. Welcome to this week's Spanish guitar lesson and welcome back to the channel. And if you haven't been on my channel before, please check out more of my videos where I'd like to show you how to play Spanish guitar from the ground up for the absolute starter. My goal is to demystify and help you take away some of the headache and frustration of learning Spanish guitar as a beginner. Okay, so lesson one was very important for our foundation in tangos, for our groove, the compas. Now, let's start looking at some chord variations that we can add to what we learned already. Okay, variation number one. We're gonna start off with another type of variation or substitution for that B flat. Now, we're gonna start off with open fifth string, and then three, 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 and then one on the first string. So we have. Now the second chord, very typically used in tangos and also in other styles of flamenco when we're playing in this A Phrygian key, uh, is gonna be this variation of C. We have, we're starting on the fifth string and it starts off third fret, second fret, third fret, third fret, and then open E, starting on the fifth string. Then from there to finish off our four chord cycle, we're just gonna go back to the other two chords that we already worked on. So again, the cycle is. And just as a reminder, remember that a lot of this isn't set in stone. So for your B flat seven variation, remember that you could play this variation that we worked on last time. You could also add the middle finger in there. Or you could do this variation that we did last time. As a couple options. So variation one with some rhythm would sound like this. One. And just keep in mind, like we learned in lesson one, the last two chords, you could use some of the variations that we learned in lesson one. So we could just finish off with. Or you can use the bass note endings. But you can always look back on video one for any of those reminders. Okay, so for a little bit more of an advanced version of variation one, let's add some pull-offs. And we're also gonna play with the bass notes a little bit, which is very typical in tangos. So we're just gonna pull off one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, one. Another variant of this is to pull off certain fingers on the downbeat, as you'll see right now. One, and a two, and a three, and a four, So one more note about this variation, this chord cycle, or this four chord cycle. You don't have to start off with this variation of B flat. You can just start off with the other B flat seven that we learned, and then go to the C, back to the B flat, to the A. Okay, variation number two also changes on the beat and was typically used a lot in old school flamenco and the foundation of tangos. One and two and three and four. One and two, three, four. One and two and three and four. One and two, three, four. So we have one and then we have just this to start off. 
we have open D string, open fourth string, then three, three, open first string. So coming out of a regular compas, it would sound like this. So another version of this variation would be starting on a B flat using this fingering, going to the C, back to the B flat, to the A. Okay, variation number three. This one's gonna be a little bit more advanced. If you were able to get those first two, then great, move on. Otherwise, if you still didn't, work on those two and come back later to this one. For this one, we're gonna be using the golpe and we're also gonna be playing with some syncopation in the rhythm, which just means that we're gonna be playing with the upbeat or the offbeat. One and two. So with my right hand, I'm using my index to come up and my middle to come down, but that's just my preference. You can use the, the index or the middle repetitively if that feels more comfortable. So with my left hand, I'm just doing some pull-offs and playing with some of the same notes that we were playing with in variation two. In the next video, we're going to work with the llamadas. They're an important way to cue to our singer or to our dancer when we're starting off or finishing a section. And also, just for ourselves, even when we're playing solo guitar, they're a great way to bookmark what we're playing. And they're an essential part of playing tangos flamenco. Until then, I will see you in the next video. Remember to practice, stay patient, and enjoy the journey. See you then.